Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Love and Marriage Detroit, Season 2, Episode 6. Listen here, I need you to subscribe, like, share, comment. I believe this is the finale. I don't know. Well, listen, Carlos be <laughs> tricking us. It'd be like a fake finale, but a real finale. Let's hope we get more episodes, but let's get into this. You ready, Blair? Yes. Let's go. So Kimberly threw the clothes on the floor talking about take this trash back because you trash and all this type of stuff mm -hmm. to Christina. Christina tells her that she is being ignorant. Yeah. You're getting loud and disrespectful. You are showing your character right now. Mm. Kim says that your friends called me mediocre. Mm -hmm. And Christina was like, did I do that? Mm. And Kim says, you felt like my apology wasn't genuine. Why is that? Well, we switching subjects. She truly cared for Christina as her friend, and she doesn't really trust her. Mm. At the end of the day, they both feel disrespected. Kim just wants them to be cordial moving forward, and Christina agrees. I don't know what Kim wants. At first, mm -hmm. like, she come there saying, your friends did this. Christina said, I did I do that? She's like Steve Urkel now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She said, well, one thing you did do. Uh -huh. was that you didn't take my apology genuine can what do what do you want yeah like like at the end of the day i wish i would have brought my pink slips but at the end of the day i don't even know what you want mm. like you wanted your little five minutes of fame to be on the show you're on the show and guess what if this is if this is the finale of love and marriage detroit you did a terrible job flop you flop completely yeah a hundred percent any thoughts on like this scene yeah i'm just kind of like kim if you can't come with actual like facts yeah. and timelines and like actual receipts of what's going on you're just going off of like so-and-so said this and, yeah. and what should have christina done like it would have been nice at least to hear what you felt she should have done if she was your friend like something. it just seemed like you were bouncing around trying to figure out something to be mad at christina about and christina she i felt like she handled it well she even was just like i'm gonna sit here and finish my drink i know you had your little temper tantrum mm -hmm. but i'm not done enjoying my evening and, <laughs> and so and on top of that she played her uh -huh. she, I, I don't know if you remember but it was something like she was like case closed she was like if the jury was to hear this like they'd be like case closed i won and things like that and i'll uh -huh. be like that's facts yeah that's facts yeah so christina is in the uh, recording studio she's yeah. recording a demo at star factory mm -hmm. her brother jason is managing her yeah. she landed an opportunity for her to sing on a song that would be played at the pistons game okay so Christina is feeling like a bit rusty and insecure when it comes to her voice. Yeah. She asked them for Brandon, um, but Brandon is not in at the moment. Of course not. Uh, she's just feeling like a lot of pressure. She hasn't been doing vocal training. She's not feeling confident in her uh, vocal abilities. Mm -hmm. And she's disappointed that Brandon isn't there. Okay. So Christina, um, after she gets out the booth, she talks to her brother and just tells him that she's just feeling nervous and he is encouraging her to work harder and she will get to where she needs to be. Mm -hmm. Both of her parents are vocalists and songwriters mm -hmm. and her mom had a popular gospel song. Her parents fought through ups and downs when it came to their relationships as well. Yeah. So Christina considers divorce when it comes to Brandon, but the brother is saying that, you know, Christina, you're the one who has the tools to make it work. Mm -hmm. And he tells her, you do your part and he'll do his part. I don't know if Brandon will do his part. I, I, I don't know about that, brother. <laughs> but the brother says that as men, we just want to feel like we are the man. If you stay faithful and respecting your husband as the man, then mm -hmm. you should get a good response. Yeah, Christina feels like Brandon's supposed to be the leader. So mm -hmm. he's supposed to be leading us back to a healthy spot in marriage. She even talked about um like hey this is his chance to support me he takes a few steps forward with basically trying to reconcile of trying to get back in the house but he's not here for me for my career um let me expose my wife just a little bit we talk about the show in real time while we watching it and she was like you know episodes back that christina was talking about how she put her career on the back burner put her singing career on the back burner to be a wife for brandon and things of that nature and i said she can't sing and she's like you don't know if she can sing you know and i said if she could sing she'd be singing okay. you get what i'm saying i think we seen a little bit of her singing and her trying to do a little chloe impersonation and things like that it was terrible okay christina can't sing this whole idea that she put a singing career on the back burner you did not have a singing career to put on the back burner so let's let's not oversell that christina now let's let's not oversell and the fact that brand is not there while you're trying to get your singing thing he don't take your hobby seriously he don't take this career that you're trying to resurrect or whatever you're trying to do seriously. That's why he's not there. He said, I let my uh, lackeys deal with you and you deal with that. Um, that's all I have to feel. I feel like Christina can't sing. Um, and she and she just following the love and marriage uh, handbook of basically like you join the show. Then all of a sudden you put a song out and things like that. 
Okay. Well, I feel like Christina, um, if this is something that brings her joy, I think that she should pursue it. Um, you know, she doesn't have a full time job. So if singing oh, that's and disrespectful. no, I'm just saying like she has the time to pour into her interests. And I feel like if this is an interest of hers that she wants to actually take seriously, then I think that it's a good thing that she's there at the studio. Uh, it would be great if Brandon was there to support her. Mm-hmm. But Brandon is also running the company. I don't necessarily know what Brandon's doing. Um, but <laughs> but I do think that, you know, what was it the sound engineer like he was trying to tell her like brandon can't be here for yeah. every for every time yeah. you know like that's just not something that's going to be able to happen but also while they're rebuilding their relationship i do think that brandon needs to make every effort to show his support to christina wow so even mm-hmm. even if she can't sing yeah oh well we'll, mm-hmm. we'll see yeah i mean the thing is is like he i felt like anyway we'll get to it later but i felt like um he was helping her when it came to the vocal coaching. And I felt like I noticed a difference um, when it came to like the tricks and the things that he was explaining to her once he was in the booth with her. Yeah. Um. So I think that she could have a career. I'm not going to say that she's going no. to be like, you know, like an A-list singer. But if she's doing songs, that's going to be played at the Pistons games. Like, that's pretty cool, too. The Pistons so. suck. The Pistons is probably the worst NBA team in that's the league. That's my opinion. Okay. okay I'm about to say. It's, not, it's, it's definitely ain't playing at the Lakers game. That's or my like opinion. That. I feel you. And then I think the brother, um, I don't know what the brother's married. Uh, Christina need to talk to married people. Okay. So not Don't talk to your family, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Let's keep going. So Anthony meets up with his aunt on his father's side. Yeah. Uh, Anthony's father passed away uh, and his grandmother also passed away. So that's his aunt's brother and mother. R.I.P. He tries to make sure his kids are okay when he brings his dad up and the Mm -hmm. aunt says you know you just need to feel what you need to feel like no one can decide when your grief period is over Mm -hmm. his father did a lot for the community and the youth um and there was a foundation um that they had and that's where anthony drew the man's movement from in order to continue his father's legacy yeah the aunt also battled with cancer and anthony didn't know if he was going to lose his aunt as well so he's super happy and blessed that she's here today Mm -hmm. and the aunt you know reassures him that his dad left a wonderful legacy and she applauds anthony for continuing the legacy i will say this though they need to do more scenes anthony you need more backstory to your character yeah than the whole you sitting around bosses you need to you get them like like we popping yeah. we popping show, like, okay. show us more of who you are <laughs> and show us more of who your father were because then that would actually give us insight of why you into the man movement mm-hmm. because it kind of come off with this man movement thing as if you're like oh yeah we men and things like that but if you actually show us the backstory in season one of your father was actually a staple in the community helping out teenagers and things of that nature it will see it, it would give us insight of why you have a desire to to continue to do something for the community in the community besides just basically we go put on suits and walk yeah you get what i'm saying because then mm-hmm. we would give you the grace of being like it gotta start somewhere he's trying to figure exactly it out. Right. but then it but if you always talk about how much you're popping and how much you're a boss and your events be looking and, exactly bare. i'll be like yeah. come on now but if you actually put yourself in your father's light of i i miss my father my father passed away but i actually want to continue his legacy then it would actually develop your character more and then maybe you will be a staple on the show mm-hmm. in my opinion maybe uh, Christina and Brandon come in for um, her next session yeah. to do the demo. Mm-hmm. He goes into the booth with her and coaches her through her like lines or whatever. Yeah. And he was very supportive. So yeah. she ended up getting it with Brandon's directions. Okay. So Christina tells Brandon that Anthony asked her to be on the podcast. Mm-hmm. And Brandon says, well, Anthony's going to be surprised when I walk in there. Mm. Um, he didn't like how Anthony spoke to Chelsea before. Mm-hmm. And when the lights and cameras turn on, he doesn't know which Anthony is going to show up. That's true. Chelsea is going to be a part of Christina's marketing team. So Mm -hmm. they're also going to have Chelsea at the podcast as well. That's weird. She asked him to come back home and Brandon said that he is there. Yeah, I actually Mm -hmm. I actually broke in the house and I'm there. (laughs) Right. Um, I will say this. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, none of y'all will know, but um, I am a musician. Right. So I kind of have some insight of when it comes to singing and things of that nature. Um, The first sign that someone can't sing and they're trying to sing is they sing high Mm. because they're trying to basically when you over like, oh, I can sing high. I can do all these things. Brandon's not going to be with you on your performances and things of that nature, as Blair was saying in the previous things. I think um, outside of this career, I think she needs to learn how to sing. In my opinion, I think she. I think she's like a singer that like you find in the church. Mm-hmm. The, the One of the worst things that can happen in, in the church is that 
you're singing the church and everybody in the church will champion you like oh my goodness you have a great voice and things of that nature and then you get out in the real world and you realize you sound like what you sounded like oh, okay. you get what i'm saying especially since her parents was raised in the church and she uh, her mother had a a a a, a, a hit mm-hmm. and things like that so i think she's basically the only people that basically told her that she could sing and things of that nature is probably people that came from the church especially since she's a preacher's kid mm-hmm. but once you get out to the real world and things of that nature especially in that detroit area that Detroit, Chicago, or like the great musicians, great singers, you will realize how behind you are. So I would say before you say you want to make it a career, actually like put the work in, mm. put the real work in. And then let's see season three if you can sing. Yeah. Um, my only thoughts are I'm glad Brandon came. Yeah. I'm glad he showed his support and mm-hmm. he walked her through this. I felt like that was a big deal for her and she appreciated it. Yeah. Um, I think they also need to set realistic expectations of how Brandon can show up in their marriage. Yeah. So that way um, there's a uh, understanding of um, the best way that they can show that support and love to each other. Yeah. Now I do think it's weird that Chelsea is going to be coming to the podcast. Very like weird. just because you're in marketing doesn't mean you get to come on my events with me, but I think that they want to get Chelsea on the show. Honestly, I think mm. that's Christina's best friend. She's trying to help her friend out. So mm. I, mm-hmm. listen here, when you're the head of the show or, yeah. or at least when you're featured as one of the head couples, you get to get your friend in there. Kimberly, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> so Colby's aunt arrives at Colby's house. Yes. And she tells her aunt how she was dealing with gender disappointment when she found out she was having another girl. Yeah. The aunt tells her it's not about you and mm. it's really nothing like having a sister. Yeah. Colby's mom and her aunt are twins mm. and um, they also have, I think, two other sisters okay. and they all grew up together. The aunt shares that she doesn't have any children, but yeah. that's not due to not trying. Okay. They went through IVF. Um, she conceived twins, but they were not viable. Oh, sorry. Um, and then they conceived another set of twins and those twins didn't make it either. Oh, I'm scared now because because um, if twins run in your family, like you got two sets of twins. Yeah. Ooh, well, they, they didn't make it. I'm no, but yeah. But I'm just saying the fact that you yeah. like it, 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 it was on the way. Yeah. Ooh, mm-hmm. man. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. And it has taken her years to come to terms with that. Mm-hmm. She was angry with God for a long time because yeah. um, she felt like she did everything right. She yeah. waited to get married. She had a husband who was a pastor. Um, she was uh, her husband was appointed as youth pastor. Mm-hmm. And um, she, I guess, was getting called in to help out when it came to that. And she mm-hmm. didn't want to do it for the longest time because she was like, I don't want to be around all these other people's kids. Like I don't mm-hmm. have no kids of my own. Yeah. But when she actually started participating, all of those children became hers and it healed a wound for her. I'm happy for that. Colby doesn't want to come across angry or ungrateful for yeah. having another girl. Uh, she talks about how she had a miscarriage the first time that they were trying. Mm. She had thoughts about if she would ever conceive. And that's when they had their daughter Kendall. Yeah. She doesn't want to come across as dis- being disappointed in what she is blessed with. And the aunt tells her like, you have to get to a place to where you accept God's plan and know that this baby has a purpose. Do you want to go first? Yeah, I just really appreciated the scene. I felt like this is somebody who Colby needed to talk to. Family. Yeah, you needed to talk to family. You needed to speak to a wise family member who has been through some things mm-hmm. who can help kind of put things into perspective for you. You're right. Because I understand disappointment okay, but I also feel like, Colby, you weren't, like, snapping back fast enough for me. I'm just like, okay, no. like, you're sad, but it's just like, every time I see you, when you bring up the baby's gender, like, you look like, like really really hurt you know what i'm yeah. saying and the gram uh, not the grandmother the aunt is just saying like girl like you have to like get yourself together check yourself yeah. like this is a blessing this is the child that you're going to have and mm-hmm. the child has a purpose so let's kind of shift that energy when it comes to this baby that you're about to bring into the world so um mm-hmm. respect to the aunt the reason why I, I, when i was watching the scene i was like she had one set of twins that didn't make it and then she got pregnant again not with one but with twins again yeah and that's one of my fears is um not losing a baby but having a set of twins two at one time scares me okay you know what i'm saying (laughs) (laughs) we are you know i mean but um i will say this out of everybody who was a disappointment in this season kimberly was number one Mm -hmm. number two is colby Mm -hmm. right and i do have and i'm happy that the aunt was was able to say what she said but colby you really disappointed me this season um in a way it kind of showed me at least based off the TV, based on what we've seen, like where your head is at. Mm-hmm. Like even hearing her say the little things such as two heads to do and things like that. What if your mother was to feel that way about doing your head right. and send you to school looking however you want to look? You get like, like the thing about it is I hope the damage is not already done. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> you get what I'm saying? Because the baby's already living within you. They can feel your energy. They can feel how you feel. They get, the show is going to be on. You get what I'm saying? So it's like I'm. it actually showed me how much the aunt is healed. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't really think about Kobe that much in this scene. I thought about the aunt because as someone who was trying to have kids, talking from the aunt perspective, to hear her niece Talk about complaining oh, the way complaining. That she is. Yeah. Any other family member probably would have snapped mm-hmm. on their niece because they feel like they in a position to because I'm your aunt. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? So the fact that the aunt was able to basically talk her through it kind of makes me respect the aunt even more. Like, oh, you're really healed from this. Yeah. You actually like can can not. Some people feel justified because they're like, I'm angry at the situation, and now I can hear how ungrateful you are. Now I feel justified being angry at you. The aunt did not do that. So I respect to that. And to hear the aunt basically living close to a parallel life of her niece, you got Russell over here trying to become a pastor or a minister of some sort and things of that nature. So it's like, Kobe, I hope for uh, upcoming episodes we see a character shift to where you're not as bratty, you're not as ungrateful, you're not as coming off as someone selfish and things of that nature, that you're actually happy to have kids. And I don't want to be this person of be happy that you can have kids because, you know, people can't have kids. That's a reality. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, gender disappointment, even though it may be a real thing, but also being grateful is a realer thing. Mm -hmm. And like, you should be grateful that you even is, is in a position that you don't have to work and things of that nature. And Russell is is basically there for the kids. <laughs> you mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? That, that he's an active father, or at least he's showing himself to be. So, Kobe, I hope you really do have a complete 180, 360, 720. Just keep spinning until... <laughs> un- spin until your attitude Spin until fixed. your attitude is fixed, <laughs> okay? All the above, 180, like all the above, 140, whatever it is. So we get to man's movement 2.0. Yeah. Anthony is, okay. is putting on an event for some kids at a high school. Yeah. He has uh, some Detroit heavy hitters at the event. He also invited Miss Michigan to come and speak to the kids. Mm. So all the guys are there except for Brandon. Um, Brandon ends up arriving after the event. Yeah. Um, but before that, you know, everybody does like their speaking and mm-hmm. basically encouraging the kids to work hard in school, stay in school. Yeah. So um, Anthony feels like Brandon let the kids down. Wait, what? Because <laughs> he wasn't at the event. Brandon feels like Anthony needs to apologize to Chelsea, and Anthony tells him never in life would he do that. Do you see what I mean, Anthony? You take one step forward, and you about to take three steps back. Brandon is like, well, you didn't really need to call her a bird, and Anthony tells him Chelsea disrespected his wife okay. after you disrespected her. Uh, um, I mean, come on now. <laughs> I mean, come on now. Even in this conversation, he keeps talking about how Chelsea's a bird. Yeah. And he said, you know, why would you have Kobe and Latoya around her? Like Brandon didn't even jump in when Chelsea was going at them. Yeah. Russell says, well, look, all the ladies can be in the same space and just Mm -hmm. not talk. And Anthony tells him that, um, you know, she's not popping. Chelsea isn't popping. You see what I mean? I don't know what's up with Anthony and all this popping type of talk. It is so weird to me. (laughs) Like, what does it even matter? Like, you give you give a person a TV show. They are. They thinking they are Bill Cosby or whatever, or, or, oh. or, or like whatever. You well, you know it is. What it is. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Bill William. Brandon says that she is popping, and you mm. are throwing shots. Like he is coming man to man to Anthony and yeah. trying to rectify the situation. And Anthony says that he will promise to just stay out of her way. I think this is one of those situations which, unfortunately, um, some guys feel like they can talk crazy to women who don't have a man in their lives, mm. and I feel like. Anthony has gotten beside himself. Come on. Because there is no man in Chelsea's life to check Anthony the way that he needs to be checked. Come on, Blair. Um, I feel like Brandon is trying to do it, but Anthony still has like little respect for Brandon. So he's like, I'll stay out her way, but I wouldn't apologize. I feel like if Russell came to him with some heat about Kobe's friend, Anthony would have a different approach. Ooh. So I think Anthony knows who's to, who to play with. And I think it's unfortunate that he would um, treat people he doesn't deem as important the way that he's treating people it's a really ugly trait Blair, if mm-hmm. you go touch it touch it he's a coward you get what i'm saying basically like a hundred percent i was going to take the, the the words right out of your mouth right then and there mm-hmm. when it came to him basically feeling like he can talk to women any type of way because there's no man there and that basically my wife's uh, uh basically she he's be she is being defended chelsea by her friend's husband mm-hmm. because somebody gotta say something and brent and it, it's gonna be hard for anthony to respect that because at the end of the day brand is just doing it as a favor yeah. but if chelsea had a man that's basically like listen here 
I will put hands on you if you talk to my girl like that. Mm -hmm. You will see a lot of that like man movement Bravo stuff go out the window very fast. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. That's what I don't really like about Anthony because he he gives off as he's he's a big guy, but really he keeps going against women. Yeah, he keeps wanting to talk to women and things like that, and, and even, it's weird. And even when he was saying Brandon didn't step in when Chelsea was going at Latoya, I'm just like, why would Brandon need to step in? These women are talking to each other; yeah. they can handle a conversation. Yeah, like why why would Brandon need to step in to do what? Like yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, but Brandon ends up moving back in the house. Yeah, the kids are happy to see him. The girls talk about how they were sad and angry with him. Yeah, um, when he was gone, and that is where we end the episode. Question. Yeah. Do you think they match go work? Mm. <laughs> the fine work. <laughs> are they going to stay together? Yes. I, I think they. I'm going to say the exact same They're thing. They're going to stay together. Yes. But is it going to be a happy marriage? It, I don't think so. Because Brandon, I don't think he knows what he did wrong. Yeah. He's just going to keep buying rings and, and getting in the studio to make Christina feel better. And yeah. she's going to accept that as good enough. So Yeah, n mm -hmm. not to break the fourth wall too much, I feel like this storyline was played out for the show. Mm -hmm. Because Brandon literally did nothing to get back in that house. Right. Literally nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> literally all, all he did to get back in that house was leave the house. Yeah. Like, it, it really made no sense. And for them to basically cap the season off in my opinion of we're back together as a family it's like okay that's probably why y'all only had six episodes y'all really needed something to basically give some type of story to this season mm -hmm. um christina's not leaving brandon mm -hmm. especially if she want to be a singer or especially since blair said she don't work full time mm -hmm. so i think i'm thinking they just go stay married and things of that nature um and we go see more. Hopefully, there's a season three. Hopefully, there's a season two, part two. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And we see more. Um, anything else you want to add to the show, to like this season? That's all I got. Listen here. Make sure y'all follow us for Love is Blind. Married at First Sight comes out this week. Ready to Love come out this month. Uh, Sister Wives, uh, Real Housewives of Potomac. Make sure y'all watching that. Um, a lot of shows is coming out, and we are trying to review all of them. Mm -hmm. We are trying to be the hub for all all your favorite shows come to us yeah come discuss come talk to blair <laughs> come listen to me holla anything else that's all y'all be good bye